Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to another episode of our tutorial for Stellaris Console Edition for complete beginners. In this episode, we're really going to let the game run and try to deal with things that come up um, as we play. And I want to kick in right now because if you recall last episode, we told our science ship to go and start surveying our home system to see what kind of exciting stuff might be there. Well, as it turns out, we have found ourselves an anomaly on one of the planets. Planet uh, Arganira in our home system has something unusual. <clears throat> Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain formation in the southern hemisphere. It does not appear to have formed naturally. So, this is a level 2 anomaly, and we currently have a 40% risk of failing to research this anomaly. So, if you look over on the right, there's a base risk of failure, and our scientist is currently only a level 1 scientist. You can see because he's got one star next to his name. At, because the scientist is less than the level anomaly, it's increasing the risk of failure to 40%. We could, we have some choices. We could leave the anomaly for now and research it later. We could change the scientist if we had more than one on our science ship because science ship, scientists, we need one scientist for each area of research and each science ship has a scientist on it, but we don't have any higher level scientists. So we could also research it. A little bit risky because there's a 40% chance that we will just fail, which could lead to some bad stuff. We could leave it for now and try again later when we're higher level. Let's go ahead and just research and see what happens. So um, that will, we'll, we'll wait a while to see what the results are. I'm gonna hit Y to unpause the game. If you hold down the Y button, it will change the play speed. You can see those little icons. So if I just hold it down here, we're now running on the slowest speed. If I hold it down, we're now on the medium speed, hold it down some more, we're now on the top speed here. Playing on the top speed is generally going to be okay. Remember, you can pause whenever you want just by hitting Y, so that's going to be fine. Now, you'll notice underneath the name of our star system here, of Adenir, we've got this icon of Mineral and 2. What's going on? Well, our science ship, if we look around on the system, it went and surveyed this asteroid over here, and this asteroid has some minerals on it. We could mine these minerals and then we would get more minerals per month. We absolutely would like to do that. Oh, let's wait a second here. This is the result of our look at the anomaly. What was previously thought to be assorted mountains in the southern hemisphere of Arganira have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old, but our scientists have ruled out that Arganira could have supported life on that scale at any point in planet's history. Science officer Bermden Pirium has prepared a special research project to delve further into this mystery. Fascinating. So the outcome of this anomaly is actually to result in a new special project. So we're just going to go ahead and hit A here to dismiss this. We'll see where we can find the special project soon enough. Situation. Anyway, we have these minerals over here. We would like to mine them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the outliner on the right. I'm going to choose my construction ship. And the construction ship, I'm just going to point it at this asteroid, hit A, and tell it to build a mining station. So it's going to cost us 90 minerals to... Oh, okay. It's going to take us 90 minerals to build this mining station, but it's going to give us two minerals per month. So in 45 months, it'll have paid for itself. It does seem like it's going to take a while, but the game, you're going to be running this game for a long time you're going to be really happy about having that mineral income for sure. You you will want to build mining stations on all the places where you can build mining station in the long term of the game. You may not build them always right away because you might be like, oh, I really need the minerals for something else first. But generally speaking, you're going to want all of them. Anywho, we got another event here. The Great Raltech Empire, that's us, is abuzz with news of alien organisms encountered by the RSS Cedrinian some time ago. The RSS Sendrinium, that's the name of our science ship. Seemingly native to deep space, they make the extremophile creatures of Adnor appear frail by comparison. While some doubted, incur encountering alien life was ultimately expected and anticipated. While nothing could have prepared expectant Araltech xenobiologists for the fascinating extreme conditions in which this life thrives. Okay, so what happened here? It's just telling us our science ship happened to find, like, microbes or something in space on another planet confirming that life might you know life exists out in space this is not intelligent life this is not you know significant life forms or anything like that but technically we have found some life on a planet other than our own and that's pretty crazy that's that's insane news all right go ahead and unpause keep this running you can see our construction ship is moving our science ship has still been told to go in and survey every planet in our system so we're gonna let that go you'll see there's a little icon here by Arganira now What's the deal with that? Well, the deal with that is that there's a special project on this planet that is available. 
Um, I don't think I can just click it. Oh no, that's interesting. Okay, so if you click on the planet, you'll get the planet itself. But if you do click on the little identifier here, this is going to bring up our situation log and highlight the special project. So let's talk about the situation log. If we close this, if I hit left on the D-pad, the very topmost thing here, uh, sorry, no. Oh, hey, our leader, who's this perm? Oh, this is our scientist on the science ship. Just gained a level, he's now level two. Oh, that's fantastic, good for you. Oh, sorry, it's the third icon here in the menu on the left, situation log. If we open this up, this keeps track of any current situations undergoing, or, or, that exist. Currently, we only have one thing happening. Oh, completed construction of the mining station. Lovely. Currently, we only have one thing happening, and that's that there's just giant skeleton. We can investigate this project if we have a scientist there, and the scientist is level three or higher, and in a science ship. Well, right now, our scientist is only level two, so I guess we can't do anything with this giant skeleton right now. But later on, we will go and revisit this giant skeleton when we have a level three scientist. You can also hit the right bumper here to go to the victory tab and see the different victory conditions. Um, so basically the victory conditions are, are sort of take over the entire galaxy, but there's different ways to do that. You could just own a bunch of habitable planets and you can own planets through ways other than just conquest. You could maybe convince someone to become your vassal and integrate them into you and then you can grow your empire in a, um, in a diplomatic way. You can also go for a federation victory. So you can form great federations, giant alliances with other empires out there. And if you guys collectively own 60% of all habitable planets, you can win the game that way. And then there's conquest where you just go and beat up everyone else, which, you know, and, and remove them from the game one way or another. So you can do this. but. Focusing on the victory conditions by itself, I think would be a little bit misleading for the game because there's a lot of things that will go on here and sometimes just just mere survival will be considered a victory. Okay, we just got to notice here that the Adnar system, that, that is our home system, has now been fully surveyed. Our science ship is now done. So let's go ahead, we're going to dismiss this. Uh, oh, we did find another anomaly though. Let me pause for a second. A small cargo pod has been left to drift in space above this gas giant. It's been captured the planet by the planet's gravity well and will eventually be pulled into its atmosphere. So this is just an, an easy anomaly. It's a level one anomaly. So our failure risk is only 10%. Yeah, we'll go ahead and research that and see what the deal is. Let me close this menu. Let me zoom out here because we have some other places we can mine. Around this gas giant here, you can see there's an energy indicator. We can go and build a energy mining station there with our construction ship so we can get more energy per turn. That's pretty good. Although we do have to maybe prioritize. Do we need the energy now? Well, we're actually, we're only making two energy per turn. We actually might want to do something about that right away. So yeah, I guess I'll do that. The reason I'm hesitating is because I really want to build a second science ship, and you're going to see why that is in a second. But for now, we'll go ahead and we'll tell the construction ship to go and build a mining station in orbit. That's going to be great. Notice at the bottom of the screen, we've got a few notifications here in our little bottom menu. What do we have? We're being reminded one of our buildings is currently not functioning. We also have a note that we've surveyed the system and found anomaly. Okay, we know those. We can hit X to dismiss that and that. But one of our buildings isn't functioning. Why is that? Well, that's our new building here. We built this mining network and we have no one working on this tile. So we're just getting notified that, hey, this building is sitting idle. You're paying maintenance for nothing. Okay, that's fine. We don't have a population that can work it right now. So we're not gonna worry too much. Oh, so the abandoned cargo pod has been checked out here. It was a discarded cargo pod. Uh, it, it somehow escaped the surface of other space or space escaped the notice of other space fares. This decaying orbit means it would have been lost in the gas giant's crushing atmosphere within another few years. When the crew of the RSS Sandrinian unsealed the pod, they found a stash of alien jewelry made out of precious minute metals. So this is going to give us a hundred energy credits. Again, energy credits is money in this game. So hey, we just got free money. Cool. Okay. So back to this building, it's not being worked right now. What I could do is could move it around. I could be like, well, we don't need food right now, so I can take this farmer off of here and move it there. But you know, mostly we're okay. But maybe you see, we've got a, a, a new unit of population being worked here. This guy, see he's kind of ghosty and transparent. This is our new unit of population that is growing on this planet. When this finishes growing, when that blue line is full, this will be a whole other unit of population that can work a tile. By default, for whatever reason, the game thought, eh, we probably want to work this food tile. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not true. I'm gonna make an executive decision. I'm gonna move this pop, even though it doesn't exist yet. It's just a ghost pop that, that hasn't finished growing. I'm gonna go and put it here. When this population is done growing, 
it's going to work this mine instead. Now, for now, this mine has still got the red icon to show it's not being worked, but the notice at the bottom of the screen did go away because the game knows, okay, we don't have to warn the player that this building isn't being worked because it will get worked at some point when this population finishes growing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that. Great. We'll go ahead and zoom out. I'll go in and pause again. So this system, we are done serving it. We know we have to go and check out this giant skeleton later, but we can wait. So what are we going to do with our science ship? Well, space is big. There's a lot of other systems out there. Let's grab our science ship. So I'm going to select it from the outliner. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, ooh. Intelligent life taunts with pointed absence. Oh, it's, it's a news post. So I'm not going to read all of these, but basically it's, it's talking about how we found, haven't found intelligent life in space yet. Yeah, well, we'll work on it. Okay, so I've got the science ship selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the Seu system. The Seu system is a whole other star system. We want to know what's there. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to say survey system. So our science ship is actually going to go and jump following the hyperspace lane. Hold on. I'm, I'm doing a bad job of hitting look at. There we go. Where's our science ship? Right down here. So he's going to go to the edge of the system. He's going to charge up. And then he's teleporting, or not teleporting, he's going through a hyperspace tunnel to this other system. So we have now entered another star system for the very first time. We're going to check out the Seiyu system and see what's around here. If we go and pop out here, you can see this network of lines. These are the hyperspace networks. All ship travel, well, this will change later. But for now, all ship travel will be along these hyperspace lanes. So we have to follow that. Now, oh, we found another anomaly. Ooh, rhythmic movement on the hellish surface of CU. Yeah, sure, let's go ahead and research that. We actually, because of our sensor range, we can, we can see a little bit. We can we could see into Seiyu ahead of time what plant what stars were there or what planets were there. We can actually see inside of Ken Ken Hygel over here. Just barely. We've got, you know, th there's there's some sort of planet stuff over here. No, we don't know much. I can't even click on it. I can't tell what kind of planet it is. If I pop out of here, same thing in um, Atun. You know, we've got a bit of a glance, but not much. I can't click on any of these things. We have no idea what kind of planets they are. If I go and try to check out this star system, which has no name or anything, I I can't even click on it. I have no idea. Ooh, Ooh geothermal anomaly giving, giving us more energy credits. Lovely. So I have no idea what's going on there. Oh, okay. We've got an event here. We are getting the opportunity to start a habitable world survey. We've got to have a mission to survey, I don't know, I think it's going to be six habitable worlds. We want to find six planets that could be habitable in the long run. Um, we could say, no, you know, we, we don't care too much. That'll give us a little bit of influence. But I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, that's a commendable initiative. And if I go and check the situation log here uh, and go to the situation log, you can see we now have a habitable world survey over here. Oh, it's eight planets. We have to survey eight habitable planets. Now, we want alpine worlds. Those are the ones that we really want to live on. But technically... Other things other than Alpine could count as habitable world, so we should be able to find that fairly easy. I believe this probably triggered because technically one of the planets in this system is probably one where technically some people could live. Um, molten world is definitely not it. Ah, frozen world! Technically, it's possible for us to go and live on a frozen world. Right now, our habitability is 0%, but that could change later on. So that's why that, that project started. Notice this planet here has got five engineering on it. There's something weird about this planet. It's a molten world. There's, there's um, interesting landscape and terrain going on. We could build a research station around this world and get a ton of engineering science for it. That sounds great. Let's tell our construction ship to come over here. I'm going to click on it. And what? Built research station is in red. Why is it? Well, if you look at the message, it says, this planet is not within our borders. Let's go ahead and take a look. If we look at our borders here, the green area is our borders. The, the sort of um, golden area is our current sensor. It's our current vision range. It's being expanded because our science ship is there. So our science ship has a little bit of sensors, so it can spot a few things. But we can only build stations within our own green borders here. So until Seiyu is somehow within our borders, either we get technology or different things that increase our borders, or we go and colonize more space, we can't build any mining stations or research stations there at all. If there was a world we could colonize, 
then we could still colonize even though it's outside of our borders and in fact that would expand our borders over there by the way some of you guys may have noticed uh the ebonic veil over here i think we've got another one yeah right over here the picaris drift these are just names that are being added to random nebulas on the map it has no real game effect no significant game effect i will say um it's mostly just flavor and it's it's really cool um this is a black hole system right over here though and that will have some impact on things later on we'll see anything else interesting to, to point out right now uh oh i think this is probably a neutron star over here like that so we'll we'll see more of those things as we go forward okay let's keep our construction ship busy though i'm gonna grab you and what i'm gonna do because here's the thing there see how this system it still says two energy there if i mouse over it it'll show me all the resources in the system the minerals and some extra energy what is this talking about well we have gone and mined the Firin Toroga gas giant. So we're getting two energy per month from here. And we built the mining station around this asteroid. So we're getting two minerals. But there's another gas giant here, which is worth two energy. So when you're on a galactic map, it highlights numbers that you haven't mined yet. So there's two energy here we haven't mined. And if you point at it, you can see everything that exists there, including the stuff we've got mined. But really, we don't usually care what we've already done. We need to know what we haven't done yet. So we're gonna take our construction ship and we wanna mine that last energy. Now I could go zoom into the star system, click on the gas giant and tell it to build the mining station, but I can actually do that from the star. From here, I can tell our, our construction ship to build any mining stations that are left to be built, go and build them. You can also see an option there for a frontier outpost. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it to start mining. What's a frontier outpost? A frontier outpost is a st star base that you can build in a system that you don't own. And what it does is it makes you own that star system. And actually your borders will grow out of that as well. So if we want the Seiyu system, we could build a frontier outpost here. Although what we could probably do is build the frontier outpost in, in Ken Hajal, or maybe this system here, and that'll probably expand the borders enough for Seiyu to fall within our, our borders as well. So building, um, frontier outposts are really important for expanding your space, but they cost influence to build, and I believe they cost influence to maintain as well. Um, so you really can't just go and spam frontier outposts willy-nilly, because you're very quickly going to start running out of stuff. Anyway, what I really want to do here is I want to build another science ship, because we want to explore space faster. One science ship, way too slow. Let's build this quicker. So let's go to our planet. I can do that from the outliner over here. Um, it's also worth noting there's another shortcut to quickly uh, go through all of your, your planets. If we go to the settings screen, you can see the... I don't know what that button is called. Looks like a, a window. I, I think of it as a select button, you know, start and select from the old consoles. Um, but you can see that one that says cycle homeworlds. If you just hit that button on your controller, it will click quickly zoom you to the home world this way and if you have more than one planet you can just cycle between them all very quickly by hitting that button and then you can just hit this so you've got the outliner you got a bunch of different ways to get there we're going to tab over to spaceport and i'm going to go down to science ship a science ship costs 100 minerals to build i will build a science ship and once it's built we'll have to recruit a scientist to run that science ship but then we'll be able to survey more stuff more faster speaking of surveying our science ship is now done surveying seiyu so i'm going to go ahead and send you i'm actually going to send you to this system because we have no vision of that whatsoever and one of the things is even if you haven't surveyed a system you i think you'll be able to see um colonizable planets very quickly you can't colonize it until it's been surveyed but you'll be able to see it so ken hygel i don't think has an alpine world because i think we would know space force on adnor has finished its construction queue so if I look on the right, I've got a new science ship. Now this science ship has no leader assigned. It can't science, it can't serve. I can, I can move it, I can tell it to go here, but I can't tell it to survey this system until it's got a scientist. So let's assign a scientist to the science ship. For that, I'm gonna hit the right bumper to go to the manage tab. And then there's recruit leader. You see there's a bunch of different buttons with different things. We're gonna look at the recruit leader button. I'm gonna click on that and here's our leader screen. You can access this from the screen over on the left. And this screen, this is the, um, let me close out of all this. This is the, um, uh, what screen is it? It's not the, it's not the society screen. Oh, it's the people screen, there we go. The people screen here has got tabs for your leaders, your factions inside your empire. These will pop up once we get other planets. And then the species. These are all the species we know about. 
um, which is just the one. By default, it actually only shows you species within your empire. You can have it show you all species in the entire galaxy as well, if you want. And you can change the rights for your population, if you want. Different population, different species within your territory could have different rights, and there's a bunch of different things that can happen there. I'm not going to go into detail here, that's kind of a later thing, but if you could have one species that's a slave species, as opposed to having full citizenship. By default, your main species has full citizenship, which is what goes on over here. Uh, later on, when you get genetic technology, you can start genetically altering your species from the screen as well. But we're interested in the leader screen. What we're going to do is we're going to recruit a new scientist. So I'm, I'm over here, I'm clicking recruit new leader, and here's our different scientists. Different scientists have different traits. They also cost influence to, per to, to hire. Ooh. Okay, we're just going to pause that. We'll talk about the precursors in a second. Um, the So this scientist here has the careful trait. He actually has a reduced chance to fail checking out anomalies. That's very, very useful for a science th scientist that's going to be in charge of a science ship. This scientist has the maniacal trait. Maniacal gives him a boost to research speed. That's really good if this person's going to be a researcher. It doesn't help with someone who's going to pilot a spaceship, or a science ship. And then we've got expertise from new worlds. This uh, scientist is particularly good at researching one type of technology, uh, which yeah, isn't, isn't the greatest because not that many technologies will fall under this category and certainly isn't what we're looking for now. Maniacal is quite nice uh, for researchers, but right now we're going to take careful here because we want someone who's going to run a science ship and we want them to not fail at anomalies. This sounds wonderful. So I'm going to recruit you for 50 influence. And now that if you're recruited, you can see he's available. I can take any of these scientists and put them in charge of the science ship, but I'm going to go and take the person I just hired because he's not doing anything right now. So I'm just going to click. Um... Oh, right. I forgot. I, I'm in the people screen here, so I can't actually assign them. I can select this person. I can rename them if I want to name them after my friend, or I can dismiss them. If I close out of here, let's go back. I'm going to select my science ship from the uh, outliner on the right. This guy here who has no leader. I'm going to go to the manage screen. I'm going to hit recruit leader. Now, if I click on this leader here, he is now piloting this survey ship. So now, if I click on the system, I can tell him to survey this system. And actually, there is something very interesting here. Even though we haven't surveyed the system yet, we know that one of the planets in the system is going to be habitable for us because it shows up in green. If I click over here, there we go. Um, the planet of, and we can rename this later, Atausneria 1, yeah, we're definitely going to rename this, is should be habitable. It's an alpine world. It's not surveyed. We know it's a size 14, but we don't know anything else about it yet. Once it has been surveyed, we're going to send a colony ship over there to check things out. Now, at the bottom of the screen, we have a new alert. Tradition available. We have enough unity to adopt a new tradition. Let's open up this screen. So this screen here, this is the same screen we looked at before with the policies and edicts, but now we can look at the traditions. We've accrued enough unity to unlock a tradition. There are six different seven different categories of traditions to choose from. Expansion, domination, supremacy, harmony, prosperity, diplomacy, and discovery. Each one of these, by simply unlocking the tradition, gives you a bonus. For example, if we were to unlock discovery, uh, simply by adopting this tradition, it would decrease the cost to build research stations by 33%. Hey, that's pretty cool. And if we look at expansion, new colonies start with a fr an extra population. Hey, that's quite good too. When you finish a tradition, it also gives you another bonus. So when you finish a d expansion, it increases our core sector systems by two. We'll talk about what that means in, in the next video, I think. If I go and click on expansion, I can look at it further. I haven't adopted it yet. I still have to hit the button at the top to adopt this. But there's um, there are traditions within this category. So. You unlock expansion, you get the adoption effect. Next time you get enough unity to unlock another tradition, I could unlock, say, colonization fever in here, which means that our capital buildings would produce more unity. And that could lead to courier network, which uh, reduces the... So it, it makes it so that the cost of traditions don't go up as much with as many colonies. It, you know, so, some of the stuff might not be obvious what it does now, but it's, it's you know... It'll be fine, and it'll start to make sense the more you play. Uh, reach for the stars. Hey, frontier outposts don't count as being as far away, so they're not going to be as expensive to build. So expansion really lets you expand faster. It's a little easier for you to take more territory, and when you do colonize stuff, you get free populations, and your population grows faster, and that sort of thing. Um, 
early on, most people either start with expansion or discovery. Discovery is quite nice. The discount to research station build cost isn't a huge deal, but what's really nice is to boldly go. This gives you an increased chance to find anomalies and decreases the chance that you will fail research the anomaly. That's really amazing. Plus, when you finish everything in Discovery, it boosts all your research speed by 10%. Now, you don't have to finish an entire tradition before you start another one. I could adopt Expansion and then adopt Harmony and then adopt Discovery, research a couple of things within Discovery, then come back to Expansion or whatever. You can do it in any order. Generally speaking though, you usually want to, you'll probably want to focus on finishing one at a time because there's some pretty good bonuses to finishing something. I'm gonna go ahead and adopt Discovery because I really like to boldly go. Plus there's a bunch of stuff in here that just makes, makes sciencing better. And I like science. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock the discovery traditions. And we have done that. So now in about 34 months, it's predicted that we'll have enough unity to unlock the next thing. Good. All right, we'll go in and pause. We'll let the game run. We'll go a little bit longer in this video here just to try to get some things started. Um, I wonder if we'll have enough to colonize. Right now our planets are good. Construction ship is idle. He's got nothing to do right now and that's okay. Again, we'll probably have to put a frontier outpost down somewhere, but uh, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I do. If we take a look at our home world, this population is almost grown, which will give us more minerals per month. Hey, that's pretty great. I like that. Okay, this planet has now been surveyed and I can tell that from the world map because it was a green planet sort of cut in half. So half green, half gray. Now it's fully green, which means we can, it's been surveyed, we can colonize it. We can get some information here so we can see what the tiles are. Um, it's gonna be 70% habitable, which is pretty okay. Normally, um, because we're an alpine species, normally all, so our home world's always 100%. And all other alpine worlds should be 80%. But we took non-adaptive. When I created the species, we took non-adaptive, which reduces the habitability by 10%. So that's why it's only 70. Habitability is, yeah, so how comfortable your people are living there. Low habitability planets, your people will be miserable. Everything will be terrible. You'll be very, very unhappy. 70% is okay. 70 is probably, generally speaking, my sort of bottom line. 60s, I might do a 60% planet sometimes but it's really not gonna be great. I'll do 60 if I feel confident that I'm probably gonna be able to get more habitability bonus somehow, somewhere. Anyway, we found another anomaly and we have a 0% failure risk because of all of our modifiers we're starting to pack together now. Um, that The scientist that discovered this anomaly has the reduced chance to fail, which is great. Okay, we have another science ship that's idle over here. So you, um, which is this science ship over here. And again, if you can't find it, you're not sure where it is, just uh, push down on the left stick and it'll zoom you to it. We're gonna get you to come over here and survey this. Thank you. All right. What I'm also gonna do, uh, since we are gonna colonize this system, I'm gonna go ahead and preemptively move my construction ship over here. I can't currently build anything unless I were to build a research outpost, which I don't wanna do, but I'm just gonna move it. We finished researching planetary unification. So that's an extra influence point per month. And hopefully already you're starting to see, okay, we're, we spend influence on a few things to recruit our, our leaders. We're gonna need uh, influence if we wanna build um, frontier outposts. We'll also need influence if we wanna uh, uh, colonize new planets. So we need new society research. We could unlock uh, orbital hydroponic farms. This is a module for star bases. Oops. Let me pause here. Um, this is a module for star bases so that you could grow plants on star bases, get more food. There's also a booster hydroponic farms. This is on our planet. So our planets would be more effective at farming. And then there's genome mapping over here, which increases our growth speed and it leads down the biological path that leads us to gene manipulation and things. Um, we are a little short on food right now, but I think um, we've got lots of food tiles on our home world that will probably just be okay with normal farms for now. I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm gonna get genome mapping as early as possible because the faster our population grows, the better. So we're gonna go ahead and start researching that. Anyway, and yeah, I was gonna take my construction ship and just move it to this new system in preparation for our colonization. So we're just gonna do that. So how do you colonize? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do it. One, if we come over here and look at our target planet, um, and go to the first tab over here, you can see colonize. It costs influence to colonize. The cost to influence, or the influence cost to colonize is based on how far away this planet is from your closest habited 
planet. So this is right next to our home world. It's one jump away from our home world. It's very, very close. So it's going to cost 30 influence, which is the cheapest, as far as I know, of influence cost for colonization. So that's not bad. So we got the 30 points. In addition to that, though, we actually have to build a colony ship. And that's going to cost 350 minerals for us. We don't quite have that. You can see it's grayed out. I can't hit the button. So we're going to have to wait. So we'll, uh, I'll just unpause. We're going to wait for 350 minerals, and then we'll get that started. Now, one of the interesting things, when you build a colony ship, you can build a colony ship on basically any planet and using basically any species in your empire. You don't have to colonize with your own species. And what's cool about that is right now, our species wants alpine worlds. Later on, we might have some species in our empire that are happy being, say, on desert planets. In which case, we can start colonizing desert planets with those species instead of my own. They're still going to be within my empire. Like, they still, you know, uh, bend the knee to my flag. But they will have a different species going on. Oh, we have another uh, uh, habitable planet over here in Ken. That's lovely. Now, one of the things I can do... So you can see, as soon as a... a, a, a ship enters a system it gives us vision of the planets that might be there so my military force that hasn't been doing anything i can grab them and just get them to sort of bop around really quickly just to reveal some some systems even without they can't survey it but they can at least give us a bit of vision and i'm going to use x to chain some orders here i'm going to tell them to go uh here then here then here and um you know what they can come around this way this way over here and then sort of come back home. You just park yourself there. So that'll give us a little bit of vision, which is gonna be great. Our science ships are ready to move again. Let's grab you. Uh, you're down You're down here. So I'm just gonna send you to survey over here. Excellent. And then the other science ship, you. I'm gonna hit the left stick to zoom to you. I'm gonna get you to survey this system here, please. Excellent, wonderful. Uh, we have more than enough uh, minerals to go and colonize. So again, what I could do if I wanna colonize, I can go and find the planet on here and I can click on it and I can go to the first tab, and I can hit colonize. That might be a little annoying, especially once you've discovered a lot of planets. Um, and it could be really hard to keep track of them all and to prioritize. So luckily, there's an option for that. If we go to the left menu over here, and we go to the cosmography screen, this shows all known planets, as well as being able to manage sectors. We'll have to talk about sectors later on. I'll probably be in the next episode. But if you go here, we've got the first tab is planets. These are the planets we own. So the Adnar planet, that's our capital. Hey, everything is groovy. I can just click here to quickly go and take a look at our planet as well um, and make sure that everything is going okay with it. Awesome. Now, if I go over and tab to the sectors view, again, we'll talk about this later on, but basically, as your empire grows, you're not going to be... Uh, able to control every planet directly. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to make some sectors and put planets within them. You can still go to those planets and you can still say, hey, build this, build that, do whatever you want. I mean, you still have control over it. But the sectors try to keep, take care of themselves. They will try to build buildings and, and, and manage themselves so that you don't, if you get to the point where you have like 10, 15, 20 planets, you don't necessarily want to babysit them all. And that's what sectors are for. But then finally, we've got the expansion planner view over here. Expansion Planner lists every planet that can be colonized that you know about. Um, you, can, you can limit this to only show surveyed stuff, which doesn't make a difference for us right now. You can also limit to only show colonizable, which again isn't making a difference for us at this time. You can choose the minimum habitability, so only show me stuff that are 100% habitable. Okay, there's nothing that falls under there, so we'll leave it at 40. And then we can select which species are we actually thinking about. If we had more than one species, we could filter this to, to look at the habitability of a particular target species. But for now, all is fine. So, we've got our planets over here. We've got uh, two planets visible. Um, this planet on the Ken system actually has a population limit of 17. It's got a size 17. So this actually might be a little bit better to colonize first. It's a little further from our home world, so it's going to take more influence. It's going to take 69 influence instead of 30, but that's okay. It also has a modifier. If we click over here um, and we go down to the modifier, this planet has an atmospheric aphrodisiac active on it. It's going to increase the habitability rating. That's why it's 75 instead of 70. It's going to give us a bonus to growth speed for some reason. Um, but it actually gives a penalty to governing ethics attraction. People here are going to be a little bit more willy-nilly about their, their interests. And they might, you know, not necessarily agree with everything the government is, go is doing. But that's, you know, that, that's just the way it's going to have to be. And we'll be okay with it. Um, we're going to go ahead and colonize. So 350 minerals. We select the colony ship. And then we actually have to select what tile... 
the colony ship is going to land on. And this colony ship will become the um, the sort of capital building or the administrative building for this planet. Now, I'm just going to hit B to back out here. Let's take a look at our capital for a second. Um, if we go to our outliner and select our capital. So one of these tiles is currently our planetary capital. That's this one over here, planetary administration. Planetary administration buildings generate energy and some unity. They also give a bonus to the four adjacent tiles, the tile above, below, and to the right and to the left. You see that little triangle with the plus? That's what it's showing. The planetary administration gives a bonus to mining and farming and energy um, adjacent to it. So with that in mind, you can sort of optimize what tile you're going to want to colonize. So this colony ship, we know if this tile, if this colony ship only produces energy and unity, it means if we put it on a tile, say, that generates these two society research, we will lose the society research because tiles only produce... Are tiles that produce something that the building doesn't produce, that doesn't count. I'm, I'm wording that badly. But it means if our, our central building only produces energy and unity, we want to put it on a tile that produces energy or unity so and, and nothing else so we don't lose it but it also gives adjacency bonus to things like farming mining and energy so you might want to look at adjacency here i think our best bet is probably to put it here this tile it has energy so we will still get the energy we won't overwrite the energy and it'll give an adjacency bonus to some good mineral spots that sounds pretty good so we'll go ahead and settle this we can rename the planet ken hygel prime sounds okay to me i'm gonna go ahead and just say okay there we go. So you got you see on the status column, it's got a little icon there. What's going to happen is our capital planet. You can see it in the outliner here, Adnor. It shows you there. It's building a colony ship. And if I were to open this and go to the spaceport, you'd see a colony ship. So it's going to automatically build a colony ship for us. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. It's going to automatically build the colony sh ship for us and send it over to that planet in Ken Hygel. Um, you can manually build colony ships, and then they'll just sit around until you send them somewhere. Generally speaking, that's not a good idea. Oh, we need to research some more science. Generally speaking, that's not a good idea because colony ships are very expensive. I believe they have a maintenance of eight energy per month. So as soon as the colony ship is going to get built, we're going to start running a deficit. Um, so you don't want them sitting around. So usually you, you build them on demand like this. Um, we have to choose a new engineering research. We've got a few really good options. So nano composite materials is an armor upgrade for our ships. We're going to look at ship design in an upcoming video, but um, this is better armor for our ships, which sounds like a pretty important thing. And it is. In addition to that, we can unlock geothermal fracking, which unlocks the mining network too. So our mines right now are called mining networks. This is the next level of mining networks. So it produces more minerals than the basic building. Hey, minerals are good. Minerals are what we build all our buildings and all of our ships out of. Having more minerals is really good. The other thing we can do is get the improved spaceport technology. This allows us to build level two spaceports, which have more defenses and more slots and everything than our current level ones. This also get, unlocks a module called the Corvette Assembly Yard. We can add that to a spaceport and then it can build Corvettes, our smallest ships, builds them faster and cheaper. The other thing is that the improved spaceport line is the ship path. This line is the th line that unlocks bigger types of ships. So you keep researching bigger spaceports and you keep researching bigger ships and, and back and forth and back and forth between the two of those. So if you want bigger ships and you do, you have to research that. In terms of what's most important early on, it's a bit of a toss up. I'm gonna go ahead for geothermal fracking. I would like more minerals per turn. Also, it's the cheapest technology. So it's gonna be the easiest for us to research. It only costs 360, but more research, more better. Um, oh, we also need physics research. What do we have? Deflectors, so those are shields for your ships. Blue lasers. Right now we have red lasers. Blue lasers do more damage than red lasers. And there's also this global energy management technology. This unlocks a new building called an energy grid. An energy grid is a building. You can see on the right-hand side what it what it does. It's an energy energy grid is a building. It's planet unique. You know, you can only have one per planet. It generates energy, three energy per month, which means it's it's like an energy, it's like the other energy buildings that we've been building. Um, but in addition to that, your whole planet will generate 10% more energy credits. Generally speaking, if you have planets that are generating any energy whatsoever, you're probably going to want an energy grid on each one of those. Since we're not, we're hoping not to get in a fight right now, I'm going to go ahead and get the global energy management because energy is great. Well, this game run a little bit more 
uh, over here. We're going to wait. I'm going to wait for the... Well, I guess I can't wait for the colony ship to uh, land because it's going to take a little bit too long. So maybe we will put a cut in here. I'm going to play the game a little bit more. I'll explore a little bit more. Maybe I'll colonize a couple more planets. We'll come back. We'll look at ship design. <gasps> we have found our first aliens. Alpha aliens in the Akronir system. Okay. Oh, and we get news about it. Everything's very exciting. Let's pause the game. We're going to go and take a look at our situation log. So in the situation log, we have something new. Investigate Alpha Aliens is available. If we want, we can go and research. It'll, it's, it needs 60 society research to do this, which means it's gonna take about nine months because we're making seven society research per month. So there you go. Um, in about nine months, we'll finish this and we'll investigate the Alpha Aliens. This could be another player. This could be another space empire out there, or it could be some sort of random space fearing, space -faring creature. We're gonna start researching this because it's really nice to do that. Uh, I don't think we have our level three scientists yet, so we still can't do the giant skeletons. We've also got this precursor of the Erassians I said we'd mention. We have found evidence on one of the planets of an ancient precursor race that used to exist in this galaxy eons ago. Um, and we have a mission to find some of the artifacts. And we're gonna do that simply by continuing to explore the galaxy and finding anomalies to research. That's how we're gonna find those artifacts. So this will get finished over time. Great story. I don't wanna sort of spoil too much of this, but um, you're gonna discover more of this as you play. Our habitable world surveys is also going along. We found three habitable worlds now. Hey, that's great. And that's gonna keep going. If we take a look at the Akronar system over here, you can see there's a red fleet over there. Green are our ships, red, are ships that we consider to be hostile. So this ship, we're considering it to be hostile, uh, mostly because we have no idea what it is right now. And we are a warlike people, and that's how we're gonna react to things. Uh, this ship fleet, this fleet has a strength of 602. Our military fleet over here, our first task force, has a strength of 77. This fleet that we're seeing here is considerably scarier than our total military fleet. We can take a look at it. Not sure what it is. Um, this fleet is composed of seven corvettes and two destroyers, or three destroyers. That's what the numbers underneath here means. Corvettes are the smallest ship class, destroyers next level up. You can tell by how many dots there are. Corvettes are one little diamond and destroyers are two. So this is a pretty big fleet, big, scary fleet. We'd rather not tangle with. We've got our fleet out here doing exploration stuff. Um, I think we should probably send our fleet home to not, not get in trouble here because I'm a little concerned that we're just going to get uh, destroyed if we stick around. So I'm gonna go and pop out. I'm gonna send our fleet um, back out towards Caster. So they're just gonna rewind here. And then I th after that, I'm gonna use X. I'm gonna queue up, tell you, go look over here instead. By default, your civilian ships will avoid um, any, any encounters. If we take a look at our fleet management screen, there is an option here called Fleet Stance. Our military fl uh, fleet here is defaulting to passive. They will fight if they happen to run into someone, but they're not actually gonna chase after a bad guy. If I click, I can make them aggressive. They will actively seek out hostile fleets in the same system. And finally, you can go to evasive. If you happen to be in a system with a hostile fleet, you will try to escape as quickly as possible, going to a friendly system if need be. If you do get in a fight, you will try to um, do your emergency hyperspace escape uh, the second that you can. I'm going to leave my military fleet on passive. I think that's okay. Your civilian ships, like our science ships over here, by default, they are on evasive. If they see anything bad, they will try to immediately get away. This is a really good idea. You can put them on passive, but usually you're going to want to keep them on evasive. Okay, and with that, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in this video. Thank you very much for watching, folks, and I'm going to see you guys next time, after which I'll have uh, moved forward in the game a little bit.